Hello and welcome. My name's Super Saiyan and this is your weekly news and pre-order video covering all of the new releases from Forge World and Games Workshop. Just want to say a huge thank you to all of the new subscribers uh, that have recently subscribed to the channel. Welcome. I release a video every day, Warhammer 40,000 content, everything from unboxings uh, to reviews to news videos like this, videos on Warhammer 40,000 Conquest and Legends and White Dwarf. If you want to support the channel further, you can become a Patreon and then you'll get an exclusive video every week showing my work in progress and you'll see some models that I don't normally put on the channel for quite a while and any support is uh, hugely welcome. Anyway, let's go over to the news on the Warhammer Community website. There have been quite a lot of things going on over the past um, week. Since the 8th of March, there's been quite a few um, posts on the community website, including a uh, Shadow Spear Focus expanding for match play, how to add more models to your Shadow Spear Force. Um, there was an Into the Heart of Warp, Black Library releases, um, McCrag's Honor, which is this really nice Horus Heresy graphic novel written by Dan Abnett, um, and art by Neil Roberts. Um, really like the art from Neil Roberts, and obviously Dan Abnett is a legendary author in the 41st millennium. Uh, they had a look at Shadespire, Mirrored City by Josh Reynolds, and Knights of the Empire, a Warhammer Chronicles novel by a host of um, awesome authors. Then there was this uh, Gamma uh, trade show uh, in Reno, Nevada, um, and that was all last week. Um, it says top secret, but basically they had a live update um, over those three or four days, and uh, you got to see some of the things that they, they released. They had a post on the 10th, uh, about the new models um, that were going to be up for pre-order for today, um, the, the Blades of Corn, a new Warhammer Age of Sigmar um, book uh, for that game system, along with a load of Judgments of Corn, a new Bloodmaster, and a new Skull Taker. Skull Taker looks similar to the previous model uh, with that sword and the fact that he's holding like a um, flaming skull. I think it is. I want to say um, also a Skull Altar. Uh, the Karanak and Flesh Hounds. I think they were all available in the um, Wrath and Rapture box set that came out, I want to say, a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago. We're going to have a look at those in a moment. Uh, there was an article which surprised me uh, on the 11th regarding Sanguinius. Uh, they showed a lot of information about him, his artwork, um, even his stat line. Uh, and his rules, um, they basically provided his um, data sheet. All you have to do is go on here and uh, click on whole data sheet and you've got it. And I went through all of his Horus Heresy rules in my review video uh, on Wednesday. He's an absolutely stunning model. Anyway, so there's a big, big um, article on Sanguinius. I thought he'd be up for pre-order yesterday. He wasn't. Then there was a look on um, the Skull Taker, the most Warhammer model ever. Really cool model, looks similar to the previous one. Um, and you've got Hero po Posiness, if, even if that's a word, um, out of 10 out of 10. And you've got another list of um, models. I really do like Abaddon. Um, yeah, there are some excellent Hero Poses um, and Sword Poses. And look at that, it's like a cloak made up of skulls. It's Games Workshop Stream, I think. Um, this is the breaking news from Gamma. Um, so from the trade show, there was this Age of Sigmar Warcry, uh, some kind of starter set, uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar Forbidden Power, Munchkin, <laughs> Blackstone Fortress they showcased, and I put this on my Instagram, um, uh, a Chaos sort of Commissar and uh, Chaos Ogryn. Um, I don't know about pricing, I think they're going to try and price it the same as um, the Anvil, but I could be wrong. They could go for £25. If it's £25, then that's not too bad. But if they go for 30 or 35 then it's, it's yeah, it's, it's questionable, in my opinion. Um, because an Ogryn isn't an Amble, uh, let's face it. Um, but still, we'll see. I'm not going to get these two guys, just to give you an update for the channel. Uh, but hopefully someone will, and you'll be able to um, find out some good content uh, covering them. All through the week, there was more articles about um, Vigilus and uh, Blades of Corn, And then finally, we got a really nice look on the 13th, a few days ago, of the uh, Chaos Space Marine Lord Discordant. Lovely model. Um, I put some of these po pictures up on um, Instagram. Uh, this Chaos Space Marine with a huge um, 
chainsword spear, chain spear, and this kind of big, I want to say heavy stub gun. I don't even think it's an auto cannon. On this horrible looking beast thing uh, with these, I want to say mechadendrites or whatever, these metallic um, tails and whips. And uh, you're just riding this, this thing into battle. Brilliant. Um, really like the model. I'd love to get it. Uh, I think the eye is pretty good as well. It's got like an actual eye on the power pack. Um, and it was actually on the front cover of Figulus Ablaze, um, which will be the second um, book. If we just zoom in there. You've got uh, quite a few other models as well, which we haven't seen, including this Terminator. Um, hopefully we'll see a new Chaos Terminators. Um, we've got obviously a Baden there. We've got the Master of Possession. We've got this... I'd say Master of Marches or Rites or something. He's got this flaming book. Then you've got Forge Fiend and a Hell Drakes. Uh, and then you've got the Lord Discordant, um, which looks like it's way bigger than the Land Raider. So we'll see. We'll just see. I don't think it is bigger than the Land Raider, but, you know, it makes it look like it is in that artwork. Um, some more artwork for it and some uh, stat lines some data sheets and things. So that was the uh, the look at the Lord Discordant. More previews for the Blades of Corn, and a bit of a Warzone Vigilus Abaddon versus Kalgar, um, and then some Warmer Forty Thousand Demons of Corn Tactica. You got some stratagems, command points, and so on. Um, then uh, only yesterday, the Siege of Terror begins. We didn't get a, a big heads up at all um, for the Solar War, uh, unless I've missed something over the past few weeks. Um, it was literally just yesterday that they said, oh yeah, by the way, um, there's going to be this book, The Solar War by uh, John French, the first out of the eight, I think, uh, and it'll be available from 10am, and it will cost you £50. Yes, you heard that right, £50. And um, the ink must have been written uh, using unicorn tears. Um, because that is a horrific amount of money to be expecting from people to pay for a you know limited edition. What's more kind of disgusting is that they haven't even got a hardback book um, to accompany in it. So everyone that doesn't get it today can't even get a standard edition ish issue on the same day. It's such a barrier for people to get products and um, a barrier for the community to to sort of shoehorn people into getting a limited edition of something when a standard edition isn't available alongside it. It doesn't give any choice and it sort of funnels people into spending as much money as possible. Otherwise, I say they lose out. These are all luxury products, but you know what I mean. I think it's really questionable um, the way that they've gone about it. However, that hasn't stopped two and a half thousand of you from buying it all because it was sold out in, a, in an hour. So it just goes to show that whatever your opinion about any of these limited edition, about any of their products actually, they go on to uh, sell them out uh, as quick anyway. Or do they? I have to question that. Did they actually sell two and a half thousand? Were there two and a half thousand? Who actually knows? Maybe they'll print more. Um, maybe miraculously they'll find another two and a half thousand. But we'll see. Either way, that was a quick way of making £125,000 in an hour. And that was it for all of the news. There were quite a few things to get through. Uh, let's go on over to Forge World and have a look at the pre-orders. And all that you got for the pre-orders uh, this week, which is hence why probably Sanguinius will be next week, um, or some of the Blood Angels units uh, from the event, uh, were the rats, the Cordor Bomb Delivery Rats, £12. I don't know whether we need these models, um, but I think they're pretty funny looking. Um, the premise of them is quite horrific, uh, using live animals um, to carry bombs, weapons of war to the enemy and, you know, then detonating them. Uh, they're not even sort of, I say, well hidden. You can clearly see, you know, dynamite strapped to them. There's dynamite on there. There's, um, this one has got the bomb sewn into it. So it's quite uh, raw and um, sort of grotesque way of, uh, using these things um, to cause damage to an enemy gang. Um, but they're here, they're 12 pound uh, for, it looks like five little rats um, with bombs. So that's the only pre-order for uh, Forge World um, this week. Let's go and have a look at Games Workshop where, oh, I think I already had all the pre-orders up, um, but if we go to pre-orders and we go view all, it's all about the corn this week. 
So you've got this week's corn pre-orders for £107.50. So you've got all the flesh hounds and the two new models, and then you've got the, the scenery. Um, start collecting Blades of Corn collection. So they've used this kind of new release of the book to kind of um, promote their start collecting set along with the codex. Clearly the, the codex or the book is £25. So yes, the you know start collecting price hike is real. The start collecting boxes, some of them are £60 now, and they were £50 you know, year a year for the past, well, for quite a few years actually, they were fifty pound. But it just goes to show you that um, you know you get your start collecting set, and then you get the um, book. Um, you can get the uh, limited edition of the book, the judgments and the cards for eighty five pounds, and then the standard edition with the judgments and the cards for sixty. The limited edition is fifty pounds, uh, which is standard. That's usually how much the limited edition codex is um, priced. Uh, there's only a thousand copies of these ones. Unfortunately, it looks like they're still going along the, the route of not disclosing how many pages there are, whereas in previous um, codexes and, and army books they do, which is, a, again, disappointing. It doesn't show you how many pages there are, um, but it does tell you that there are 34 war scrolls in there. As always with the limited editions uh, books, you get a soft touch alternative cover, that features wraparound art, a ribbon marker, and the fact that there there are a thousand. It doesn't say anything about the um, pages. Um, you know that they are the page edges are are different. But as you can see there, it looks like it's kind of a goldy, brassy colour. Um, so yeah, they've just missed that out of the description. Um, then you've got Solar War. Now you click on there and it is on, on store only, even if you go to Black Library it um, transports you to, to the website. And as you can see it is sold out online, so £50, it doesn't say how many pages, it is the Siege of Terror book 1, it doesn't necessarily say how many books they're going to be, but I think I, I read somewhere that there's going to be 8 of them in total to finish off the Horus Heresy. So this is the start of the end I want to say, um, it looks really nice but what what they do is they when you click on it when it, once it's sold out online they put this big banner in front of it which is absolutely ludicrous people can read clearly if they're interested in the book just have the no longer available on the right hand side because we still would like to see the book and the map and the pages and you know may, maybe for the next edition games workshop has games workshop ever thought about that that um you know we might want to see what's going on with this um, Solar War book, so that it, so that next time for the second book we might want to get the second one. But no, they don't change this this format of um, blocking out the complete product um, by putting sold out online, which is a real shame. In terms of the price of it, <laughs> I think it's way too pricey. I think they're really pushing it with this fifty pound. However, the proof is in the the pudding. Look, um, it's all sold out. It's sold out in an hour. I think I I timed it. So they made one hundred and twenty five thousand pounds in in an hour. Um, that's what we're saying uh, with this uh, limited edition book. So regardless of my own opinion on it, um, there are plenty of people uh, that um, have wanted this book that are up to date that have read either all the novels or they've or they've traversed their way through the Horus Heresy journey. Uh, and they're eager to read the first book in, you know, in the start of the end, basically. But my personal opinion, I think fifty pound is too much, regardless of what it's made out of. Um, you know, it'll be printed in China. You, you can just you can add that to your list straight away. Most of their books are the Horus Heresy eighty pound books are. Personally, I would have liked to have had this book, um, maybe at this price fifty, but with a. Uh, just a slipcase. I mean, it says it's got a Con Constantina map. Would have been nice to have like a, a limited edition poster in there as well, like a rolled up poster. That would be cool. But uh, another edition, what I would have liked to have seen with the release of this is just a standard edition paperback um, and also hardback, a hardback version. Hardback for 20 quid, softback for 10 quid. Um, and then you've got this edition at 50 because I think it is unfair for people that, well, really wanted this book for instance and they've only made it limited copies um, for people that didn't want to pay this much uh, and actually people that have invested a lot of time and money in all of the other 60 novels throughout the, the last 
15 or so um, years. Uh, I think it really sucks and I think uh, always put your fans first and they should have offered other alternatives, uh, in my opinion, other opportunities to get hold of this book, to get hold of this start of the story um, without uh, a huge, huge paywall, definitely. But that's just my opinion, of course. Let's have a look at the other pre-orders. Um, so you've got the Flesh Hounds there, £30 for the five of them. They were uh, available in Wrath and Rapture. Then you've got the Battle Tome itself, £25 for that hardback book. You've got the Skull Altar, um, which is £22.50. Um, bit of scenery there. <clears throat> no doubt that is, yeah, that's clearly made in China. You can tell it's got the darker plastic on there and it looks like it's, what, two sprues? Um, so be that as it may, that's, you know, £11 per, per sprue there. Um, then you've got the interest in new models, the, the Skull Taker, um, 20 pounds, awesome looking model, really big fan of this. If I collected um, corn, uh, I'd be getting this straight away. I love his scenic base, I love how the ground is um, cracked underneath him. If we can do a 360 view maybe, we can look, drag to spin but you can't look what's going above him. Like you can't do a, th it's not really a three, it's just a, just one of those. It's not a full motion kind of spin, but you can see there there's lava and things underneath. And then he's got this amazing skull cloak. Look at the sprue. It's not actually showing the skulls on there, which um, really does suck, but it does show, you know, that base and the sword. Um, but awesome model, 20 pound, I don't know. I suppose so. I mean, he is a big HQ. They could have probably priced him at 15, but you only are gonna get one of them normally. Then you've got Karanak, the Hound of Vengeance, which again, I think was in Wrath and Rapture. Judgments of Corn, which are new. Um, I do like the skulls with the bleeding blood. They're pretty cool. Um, and then you've got the uh, e-publication of the Battle Tome, um, and then the Bloodmaster, Herald of Corn. Now, one thing I wanna say about the Bloodmaster, um, I think that's an all right model especially for £15, you don't get much plastic there, as you can see, but that's a standard kind of price for these kind of single kind of characters. What I will say about um, the Bloodmaster and the Skull Taker is they are both in, along with Karanak actually, and the Flesh Hounds, is they're all in the Chaos Demons um, 8th edition Warhammer 40,000 book that I got quite a few, you know, sometime last year. So you can use them in your games of 40k if you want to get this army. Don't think that it's just for Age of Sigmar. You know, you can use these models in 40k, which is fantastic. Always good to use um, new models in more than one game system. Then you've got the War Scroll cards, Blades of Corn uh, for £15. Then you've got uh, an Iron Warriors Omnibus paperback, Perdition's Flame CD, Agent of the Throne, Ashes and Oaths, and the Wicked and the Damned um, paperback. I think that's like the new horror um, novel. Anyway, um, all of these, when you click on them, it just says share, it doesn't actually, you know, you can't buy them. They're just on the store there, on the pre-order section. Now, next week's gonna be interesting, um, especially for Forge, we're really interested to see what they're gonna have up for pre-order, and uh, definitely for um, for Games Workshop too, whether they're gonna have another slurry of releases for Corn or whether they're gonna hit the ground running and um, release some more models for Chaos, uh, for the Vigilus, whether it's gonna be a Baden or whether we're gonna get the new Vigilus book. We'll have to wait and see. What are your thoughts and opinions on all of these corn models? Have you pre-ordered them? And are you looking forward to using them in your games? Um, please put your comments and opinions down below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.